Shawnee. Welcome back. So as you can see, my eyes are already done. And I actually used the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. I used this shade here, which is the multi-chrome. The name is Vision. I used Aspiration and I used Blackest Black. So I just used Aspiration and Blackest Black on the outer uh, V and then I just put vision all over my eye. So pretty simple. Um, and I figured I would do my face makeup and I want to use my KVD foundation. Um, I actually have two shades because I could not find a perfect shade. And I think, I think this is the foundation that someone like got mad at me about because I put, um, a bit of foundation mixer mixer to lighten it up and I was like okay anyway so typically I go in the office this week but I haven't gone because of the ice on the ground and I already like ice skated to my mailbox and I think it would be worse to do that in a car. Thankfully it seems like everything is melting so let me know how the weather is over on your side of the world. So I'm going to go in with some moisturizer. This is the Honey Halo, nope, Honey Drop Moisturizer from Pharmacy. And just because I didn't go in the office doesn't mean I'm not going to give you some news stories. <laughs> okay, where do I start? Um, hmm. Okay, there are two, like, random, like, litigation things going on. <laughs> There's this guy in Texas and he has decided that he wants to bring some claims against Walmart. Big old Walmart, right? So what he did was he went ahead and hand wrote, um, what was it called? I don't even, I don't know the legal jargon, but he hand wrote it, okay? Like most things in my opinion, I think you're supposed to, I don't, I don't know. Can you just hand write like a summons or something? I'm not quite sure. Um, but let's, let's just, his name is Roderick Jackson. And he is from Texas. I already, like, I, I knew a Roderick, and I already feel like just, just off of his name, I'm like, there will be shenanigans. So, in Texas, Roderick has filed two handwritten complaints. I really hope his handwriting was legible. So, the complaints don't go into detail about why Mr. Jackson is suing, but essentially he told Walmart in his handwritten complaints that he's going to need them to go ahead and give him a hundred million dollars. And if they're unable to do that, then he would just like a lifetime of free shopping at any Walmart location. But it gives no, re no real reason. I think one of the things he wrote was like, just being being um, accused of shoplifting. There's no record of any of this. And then come to find out that <laughs> Mr. Jackson has done this before, about three years ago. So he's just like, Walmart, one of these days, y'all gonna take this seriously and you gonna give me my money or let me shop for free for the rest of my life. And also with this one, Roderick decided, you know what? I'm going to amend this. I don't want a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million. I'm sorry. I want 175 million. So I feel like he's like, listen, the better choice is to just let me shop at any of your stores for free forever. And don't sleep on it. Listen, Walmart has come up. Okay. Like I found some cute clothes at Walmart. You can get anything. You know, they have those crazy prices. Like this is 372, uh, three dollars and 72 cents so go ahead and roll back those prices Roderick they just gonna throw this this stuff out like I think they already have but listen shoot for the stars or is it shoot for the moon and you'll you'll land amongst the stars I don't know what it is but 
that's what Roderick is doing with his free time. So I'm going to mix these two shades. This one is, this is the Good Apple KVD Foundation. This one is tan, deep. It's all right. Is that a D? What is that? Is that a D? Shy, is that a D or a zero? Oh, we're, get the readers out. Oh wait, are these regular glasses? I, what's happening? Are those regular glasses? Are these regular glasses? What could be? Child, these are regular. These are my regular glasses. Like I'm trying to see through walls or something. Y'all. Is this what it's like to be aged? Listen, I know I have some reader. No, that's not it either. I know I had some. I have about 10 pairs of readers. And ain't none of them right here. Listen, I'm going to be right. This is why I buy like 10, 12 of everything. <laughs> because I'll just be like, where'd it go? Oh, okay. This is Deep 84. And this is... 1076. Do, do not hate, okay? Get you some readers. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna mix these. But first, I'm going to go in with this Vanessa Myricks Beauty Oil. I've been using this as a primer. So I'm just putting two drops. There well, you go. And I'm gonna put this on the face. Okay, so that is the first litigant. The second person who's suing is this man named Nico D'Ambrosio, okay? Doesn't that, doesn't it sound like he's, he's like allegedly a playboy? It, I feel like the, it's just, um, so Nico, he is suing for 75 million so his case is just a little bit less i guess i don't know he's just like this is more appropriate so i'm going to be able to get he's suing like 50 different entities i think it's like 20 um or so or maybe it's something it's a number of identified women a number of Jane Doe's and then quite a bit of folks within the Facebook thing like Meta and whatever else is in there and then he is suing this website that is called are we dating the same.com it's like in so it's like a website where it's like are we dating the same man women can women who are dating men can go on there and put like pictures of folks and posts and talk about their experience with them so basically calling these jack rabbits out right go ahead with this makeup um so nico apparently was posted on said group website and he didn't get the best like evaluation um a lot of the stuff said that he was like super clingy and that he would call these women names if they didn't sleep with him this is all alleged and that he would um ghost people after he had sex with them. Just like, it doesn't sound like Nico's the best. And it seems like there were multiple, you know, accounts of this, several people, right? And so Nico is like basically suing for pain and suffering. He said that it's, they have like, there's defamation of his character and um, they've caused like emotional distress essentially and an unspecified amount of uh, like lost wages. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he's like having panic attacks so he can't like go to work or something. I don't know. I don't even know what, what Mr. D'Ambrosio does. Um, but he's real, real upset. And in the 
So he went to a, a, an attorney. So he's he's not going the route of Roderick. He's like going the route of, you know, having someone who actually knows the law and stuff. Although I don't know, maybe Roderick does know the law and he didn't have a computer and a printer. So, um, but Mr. D'Ambrosio is like, I'm real embarrassed. They are like putting my name out there in the streets and making me sound like a terrible person. And I want 75 million doll hairs. And the other thing is that a lot of these women said that he, um, would text them and just be like coming at them. I think especially after the after finding himself on that website, I think he would supposedly be texting and harassing them. And his lawyer is like, first of all, those texts do not exist. Those aren't a thing. And then he's like, and if they did exist. <laughs> and he's like, and if they did exist, um, it's protected by the First Amendment. Is it though? Can you like... Can you do that? Can you like harass someone and it be protected? Can't you not do that? Wouldn't that be under some kind of like cyber stalking harassment? I don't know, but we don't know what's going on yet with Mr. Nico the Ambrosio. Um, I'm th I don't know. I'm thinking maybe it'll be thrown out, but then on the other hand, I mean, there are websites like that, right? And it doesn't seem like they are like, I don't know, I don't know. Let me know if you know, cause I don't. Um, but yeah, he's like, I don't have time for y'all. I need $75 million. I don't, I don't really know how he came up with that dollar amount. Just the same, I don't know how Roger came up with his, you know, like I'm not quite sure. I don't know if there's like some calculation you do. I don't know if there's some cal calculation you do to kind of figure out like, yeah, so my pain and suffering is about like 60 million. Um, then the defamation part. Let's, let's go ahead and, and like, let's, let's go 10 million on top of it. Um, and then let's just throw in another five for funsies. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all litigious folks, let me know. How do you figure it out? I mean, I think if it's a wage thing, you can definitely, like, figure that out. And if the pain and suffering, like, if he was paying a therapist, like, you can figure that out, too. But I just wonder how these, these like, ballpark figures come out, you know? Because I also wonder, with Mr. Roderick Jackson, how did he go from $100 million to $175 million? Like, what was it that he was, like, actually having to amend this judge? Mm, I think it actually is $175 million. I don't know. So, Mr. Jackson. Sorry, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> um, He is asking for $100 million more. Then Nico. You know what I haven't tried is, does, does KVD have a concealer? I think they do. I know I didn't, I don't think I used that thick old like balm they had. Um, and these are the only things I have from that brand and I never purchased before. Kit left, um, I purchased after. They changed the name into KVD Vegan Biological Sunset Company. So I'm going to go in with, um, I have quite a few concealers sitting here. I actually, I keep forgetting that I want to try the new, um, Fenty concealer. Um, so I have the old one or the original, I guess, but it's matte. And I'm wondering how a more hydrating one will be because I, I find this to be matte leaning drying. Um, so I've got that. I've got some Sephora concealers. I have the um, 
this is called? Uh, Eve St. Laurel. And I also have Matt, um, Mark Jacobs. Um, I have other concealers over there, but... Let's go, yeah. Let's go with the Fenty one. I want to finish this one up. Okay, so let me tell you... Wait, let me get the last name of this woman. I don't have... I don't remember her last name. I'm just remembering her... Her first name. Oh, yes. Roxanne Boucher. It actually probably is like duck it, but I'm, I'm trying to make it fancier. Um... 64-year-old woman with a 73-year-old husband. Seems like everything's going fine, right? And then, all of a sudden, Mr. Duche gets really ill and ends up in the hospital. Tell me what this sounds like. And let me take, let me take you to the start, okay? So, or, or the middle. So... Their daughter is visiting the mister in the hospital. And she's like, Dad, like, what happened? What's going on? Like, he's 73, but it seemed like he's an okay, you know, he, he shouldn't be falling out. But I, I do think he has some sort of cardiac history. But it seems like it's like, whoa, what's going on? Why are you in the hospital? So he says, all I remember is I came home and I had some soup that your mom made, but you know, I didn't like it. It was kind of bitter. Last thing he remembers. So, the daughter, I don't know. I don't know why, but the daughter was like, obviously something's going on and your wife slash my mother allegedly might be involved somehow because how you eat the soup and you end up here there was only enough soup for you who does this sound like i don't know it sounds like the the mushroom lady in australia okay so somehow the daughter gets a hold of the mom's phone let me look back because i'm still wondering how she do that let me see. Yeah, so I'm not sure, but it says the daughter was going through all the mom's messages on her phone. So, obviously we're talking, well, not obviously. Um, but through the messages, the daughter, is her name Jessica? Actually, I made that up. They don't even name her. Mm -hmm. 
who's apparently a star on The Bold and the Beautiful. I don't, I don't know about The Bold and the Beautiful. We used to watch Days of Our Lives like suns through the hourglass. Um, so she's chatting it up with the soap opera star. And they must, I think they must have been like having some sort of tryst, like allegedly online. And so in the messages, Jessica, is that what we're calling her? She finds that, um, <laughs> that the guy supposedly was like, you have to get, get rid of your husband, honey. I need you so much. And in response, Roxanne was like, yeah, let me think about it. Okay, so then a little while later, like, I don't know how they got to this point. I don't know how they got to this point of, you know, you got to off your husband. I want us to be together. I love you so much. Yes, I'm a Hollywood star, but I'm totally into you, random Roxanne Duche from Townsend, Massachusetts. So... A little later, Roxanne is like, bet, I'm about to do it. So Roxanne is like, I made him some soup. It's a special potion in it. And there's only enough for him. And he's totally going to be hungry when he gets home. So he's going to eat it. And, you know, soap opera star is like, bet, get a girlfriend. And so then... <clears throat> So then, um, once he was like, you gotta do this, she was like, I made an amazing soup. He's gonna be hungry. There's just enough for him. And that was at like 2.34. Two hours later, at about 4.26, and not even a whole two hours later, she goes, the hubby got back and he's not feeling well. And then she says, maybe I can collect life insurance. And the alleged soap opera star is like, Honey, when will that be? <laughs> she says, I don't know. So anyway, then at about 5.11, so what's that like, uh, 45 minutes later or something, she calls the police or calls 911 and she's like, my 73 year old husband is unresponsive. Um, he's breathing, but he does have a cardiac history, so I'm a little concerned. And he was feeling very dizzy earlier. Now he's sitting in a chair. He's mumbling. He's incoherent. He's not making any sense. So the ambulance comes, and they take her husband to the local hospital. So again, when he gained, regained consciousness, that's when the daughter was like, what had happened? Um, and that's when he was like, your mom made some nasty-ass soup. I ate it, and here we are. So, Roxanne is being charged with, let me get it right so that you know. So, she's been released on personal recognizance, um, but the conditions of her release include that she have no contact with her husband, no contact with her daughter, stay 100 yards away from her husband, undergo a mental health evaluation. Not surprised by that and be confined to her home except for medical appointments and she has to wear a GPS monitoring device. Now, I don't know what home because I'm assuming that her and Brad live together. So I don't know, I never know how that works when they're like, yes, you live together, but you try to kill your partner, but we need you to be on house arrest. Um, so I don't know, I, does someone have to move out or just take up residence somewhere else? I'm not quite sure. So, I don't know about this part, but when the police had spoken to Roxy, she said something about, like, she had told her husband that she was going on a retreat or something. I don't know why, but at some point, she came clean and was like, just kidding, <laughs> not going on a, on a retreat, but I have been messaging um, Thorsten the fourth, whatever his name is, I've been me messaging him. And I don't know how it came about, but she realized that maybe it wasn't him. And she was like, that she thought she was messaging a star, you know, like a Hollywood star, because she's always wanted to meet one. Now, Mr. Thorsten, he was real like rattled because he 
a few weeks earlier, he had been scammed out of $8,000. So I really th like the daughter or whomever, they really have to like teach their parents that there are all these scams going around. Don't get nobody no money. Don't don't think somebody is who they say they are. Everybody's a liar. Like, I feel like they need to really hammer that in for them because these are two folks that have both gotten scammed. So it, at this point, it seems like they're being targeted, right? So he had been scammed out of his money. And I don't know, what it, it feels like maybe there is something going on in the relationship because it, how are y'all both connecting with, with other people? I don't understand it. Um, so, so once the police are talking to Roxy, she's like, you know, that she's afraid to be alone. She would actually never hurt her husband. She loves him so very much. She loves her kids. And she added that she hopes her daughter doesn't think that she put her husband in the hospital. Because, you know, we have to add that in. And she's supposed to not um be in contact right but when she had got, gotten arrested first of all she wouldn't turn in her cell phone nor her tablet i feel like that's gonna go against any sort of mental health defense um so she wouldn't turn it over and she resisted arrest and she had on a boot and she went ahead and kicked police uh police officer marshawn in the foot so they did seize her phone and everything. Um, and then a few days later, she violated the protective act. Um, she was arrested again for violating an abuse prevention order. So Duche, her husband, Brad, James, Brad had received a handwritten letter from Roxy that violated the no contact order. So what happened was her letter, it was like included in the couple's bills that Roxy asked a neighbor to mail to her family, allegedly. So she says, please consider dropping the restraining order. First of all, that sentence, stop right there. Don't go any further. She's like, it's a, that's a long time to have you out of my life. I'm guessing if she's talking about potential sentencing. And she says, I want my husband back. I miss you so much. Ma'am. Not only that. <laughs> Not only that, but I guess, you know, the neighbors are nosy. I, like, there was a time where there was an ambulance outside my neighbor's house, and I sure did go right outside and say, hey, is everything okay? I sure did. So the neighbors are watching. They're from across the street, and they've been like, we wonder what happened. And when they had asked, when Gail asked Roxy, she said, oh, he's just, he had a heart attack. So, Roxy, girl, I don't think it's going to work for you to do any sorts of mental health defense. Mind you, well, mm, there are different aspects to it. So I won't go into it. I just know the psychological part. I don't know the, the legal part as well. Just a little bit of it. Um, something is wrong with Roxy, y'all. Something is wrong with Roxanne. Something is wrong with her. I mean, it's fair. I feel like, oh, Roxanne. I feel like this happens a lot in terms of scams. Like, I've even had clients whose parents have been scammed and things like that. And there was one time when somebody tried to scam my mama. Child, I was, ugh, I was ready. I was re ready. Anyway, so... Like, now Roxanne is just sitting up in, in jail, and I'm guessing that the fake Thorsten ain't coming to visit her, I'm guessing. But who, like, why would you do that? Why? And what was the long con? Like, what was going to be the the end result of this? Like, once she had gotten Brad out the way, 
And then if if they initially didn't suspect anything, but you know, they have to do an investigation, especially like if somebody just like dies at home all of a sudden, they have to do this little investigation so that, you know, if need be, you do get the life insurance money. But let's say all of that was fine and somehow she got through it. So you have the money. What happens next? Because I imagine Thorsten is not going to show up on your door like, hey, girl, oh, let's live our life together. You know, I'm guessing he's not going to do this. So is he planning or we don't even know who what gender this person was. Were they planning to just be like, oh, bae, like, good job, honey. Send me just send it to me. I'm going to put it in this account that we can we're both going to be on the account so we can share it. Like how? <laughs> First of all, it's not okay that people are out here scamming. That makes me so upset. That may, I don't like that. It makes me, so, like, people are just, why are people such trash? Just, period, garbage. Like, why are, it really bothers me. It really, like, makes me upset, honestly. Like, the other thing that made me upset the other day was that, y'all know Nikki Lynn. She's my little boo. And somebody was on her um, video just just being rude and I was real nice initially and I was like you know uh, I'm wondering like what's going on what's making you post this rude stuff to the the, um, the commenter and what got me was they were like first of all it was hard to even figure out what they were saying in their words but basically they were like I don't know why you're buying all those palettes I have two palettes and I'm fine with it bye See, I'm going to come at you nice. I'm going to come at you nice first. Maybe you're having a bad day. I don't like when people do that little, that little snarky stuff. Bye. Girl, bye. So, Nikki's like, um, I bought the palettes because I want to. And the person is like, then you can't be complaining about your job. Girl, is it your money that I'm using to buy these things? Am I purchasing it from your account? No? Okay. So then... Erica comes in, Erica, Erica, y'all don't know Erica, because Erica will fight, all right? Erica comes in, and Erica's just telling, telling this person about themselves, and then I come in. See, me and Erica are the crazy ones. Jan has more sense than us. Jan, <laughs> so, we're the ones that, like, Jan's gonna calm us down, and me and Erica are like, we ready. <laughs> So I come in and I'm like, you know, I understand that you don't like this, but what was the purpose of leaving this comment? Like, what's going on? And then the person was like, because I wanted to unsubscribe, whoever you are. And I was like, oh, no, I'm just somebody who's not going to insult you right now, even though you're being incredibly uh, rude and disrespectful. They should have left it at that. Because then they came back and they were like, don't you have anything better to do? It's one in the morning. First of all, I'm having a little bit of insomnia, ma'am. Second, this is where, this is where I just kind of was like, I would put in there, you know, F around and find out who I am. <laughs> and I used the four letter word, guys. I typed it out. Y'all know I don't really cuss them like that. But I was like, around and find out. <laughs> They didn't comment after that. So, I don't know if they said something else. But my thing is, people just feel real big, bad, and bold behind a keyboard. Big, bad, and bold. Because you would not say any of this to my face. A hundred percent. A hundred percent is how sure I am that you wouldn't. Okay? And then you go on, on somebody page you don't even know. Did nobody ask you to watch this girl's video? And then you have something snarky to say. I, what? Read a book. Go outside and touch some grass because you need to come back to reality. Anyway, so as I was saying, I think, about these folks being scammed, I don't like that. It makes me upset. It just, it's so, ugh, you know what I mean? Like, have you had the experience of somebody, like, taking something, like, a package off your doorstep or something? Like, so with the ring camera, right? I don't know if y'all have the ring camera. But if you do, this, you have to pay attention to, like, the neighbor side of it. Because you'll get all the deets on what's going on in the neighborhood. It's like... <laughs> 
Those of us who are nosy, it is like tea. It is hot tea that has been cooled to the perfect temperature so you can just chug it. You don't even have to sip it. So I love this little neighbor part because people be like, what was that? <laughs> Did y'all hear something on First Street? <laughs> A lot of like lost pets and things and then people just stealing stuff off of people doorstep right in the broad daylight like or like the the county clerks do they have these discussions with like older adults about like you guys like look out for this because people are stank you know and they're gonna try to take advantage of you like don't accept friend requests like don't give people your info never ever give anybody any money not 80 cents, not $80, not 800, especially not 8,000. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like we need to do a little bit more for our older adults. And it's not even just older adults, it's all of us. People be scamming the hell out of us. I don't like that. That, mm, that makes me so mad. It like hurts my heart. I just don't like when people are evil for no apparent reason. <laughs> I don't know if there's a good reason to be evil. Maybe there is, you know. But I, I don't like people being taken advantage of or just being like targeted. That's so gross. People get on my nerves. Cause I'm like, you know, if somebody's trying to steal my pet, if you would have just told me you wanted something for the package, I probably would have gotten it for you. Just like people, how many people have dashed away with my DoorDash? Like, if you would have just said, hey, I'm at the restaurant, I'm just wondering, can you get me like a little bit of fries? I would have, I would have included the fries in, in the transaction. Like, all you have to do is ask. You don't have to steal. Oh, I remember. This one person picked up my order and dropped it off one minute after. Child, I live about a good 15 minutes away. How you drop it off that fast? Did you teleport over here? I just, it's so gross to me. I don't like when people do that. I don't see the reason for it. And if you're, you're more likely to either get, I'll add a meal to the order or I'll give you like a significant tip so you can go on right ahead and get yourself something to eat. I don't like that. I, I wouldn't do that. You don't even know me well enough to have a reason to steal from me. Like, I'm a nice person. But let me tell you, this is the Givenchy powder. Let me tell you the last story because this is going to cheer us all up. So, those of us who have pets especially those of us who have pets with attitude and pets that have like obvious personality. You know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Rosé. I'm also talking about Jan's Kitty Puppers. <laughs> I'm talking also about the rest of y'all who have some crazy animals. Tracy, I'm talking about you. And what, what's the crazy one name? What's the little crazy dog? Uh, you know which one I'm talking about. The one that was eating my hair. Chewing off my hair like, ow. <laughs> anyway, there's this couple. And I think one of them is named, is his name Clayton? That's like, let me see what his name is. 
Did I save this story? Because this, this child, I ain't, that one is stupid. Um, where is it? This is another stupid one. I know the story, but I wanted to get, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna tell that one too. <laughs> so there's this couple, I just go off, off the top, off memory. And they're getting something at their house, like fixed or repaired or something. I think it was like a fence or whatever. And the people who were fixing it were like, we need to be paid in cash. Now, first thing that comes to mind with me is that this is not necessarily like a, a, a company. You know, these are a couple people who have skill and are willing to do this for you. And they need to be paid under the table. That's just, just my hypothesis right and i'm not mad at it listen do can they do gutters because <laughs> if they can come on over here honey i'm fine with paying you cash there was a time where oh y'all don't even i can't even tell you the entire story but for some of y'all know that no it includes one thousand three hundred and thirty two dollars and twenty two cents anyway but my basement bathroom had flooded right this was like the day I moved in. I was just like, oh my God, like I don't have the energy for this, all right? I don't have the energy, it's late at night. My sister is here, we're arguing about finding a plumber. My dad is yelling at me to go get, get, like my dad is trying to make me do it myself. I'm like, sir, you have raised me. Why is that a question you would even throw at me or a suggestion? So, we went next door. <laughs> we all know these people. My sister went next door and was like, hey, do you guys know a plumber? So then the Rashawn over next door, he was like, oh, yeah, Bootsy over there, um, he has a friend named Mike. And Mike is a plumber. So Bootsy and Mike come over and Bootsy has like some, I don't know why. Mm, this is probably wasn't the best idea but he had like some tequila or something so i was like dude i need some tequila so yes this is how i met some of my neighbors but mike fixed it all he told me how much it was gonna be i went down to the bank i took out some money and i gave it to him so i understand these little things where it's like okay how much does it go on <laughs> but these people the workers they were like this is gonna cost four thousand dollars in cash no credit and so the couple went and they they got the money in a little um little envelope. It's like hundred dollar bills and fifty dollar bills. And so they decide, let's just leave it right here. Let's go out and check on everything that's going on. So it seems like everything was fine. And they come back in because they're like, okay, we have to pay them now. Um, they did a good job. Let's give them the four thousand dollars. They look down and their little dog. It's probably like some kind of cute name like Princess. Their little dog, honey, has chewed up all that money. Chewed it all up. Ain't left nothing. <laughs> no crumbs. <laughs> I'm like, these animals, these animals do not care. We exist in their world, okay? We are there to serve them. They don't care. This dog, this dog was like, I know how much this is worth. I'm going to go ahead and take it. I'm going to eat all this food, which is actually cash. Oh, here it is. Okay, I found the story. Because there was, okay. Now, so they had to figure out how we going to get this money back. We got to pay these people. We have to pay these people. So they, they had left it on the counter, on the kitchen counter. I guess they were thinking, you know, nothing's going to happen. But, oh, Cecil. That's the dog name, Cecil. He's a little seven-year-old golden doodle. <laughs> and he's just like, he eats the money, and then they come back inside, and he's just chilling, like, I just, cats and dogs. So, okay. They were able to reassemble some of the bills, right? So I guess they were just like using tape and stuff and putting stuff together. This feels real like set it off. So they're doing that and they were able to reassemble 
about 1,500 worth of bills with the serial money, um, serial numbers intact, and they were replaced by the bank. I didn't even know you could do that. I would just be like, I don't know what to tell y'all. Uh, the money's gone. But they also were able to get a couple, a couple more hundred dollars once some of it came up because Cecil couldn't digest it. Now, how much is that? That's 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 not four thousand, is it? Mm mm. But they were like the rest of the money involved a lot of waiting and it was dirty work. So you know what that means. Over the next two days, they was finding money, and they were using a utility sink to wash it, and they taped it back to yellow. Here's the best part, though. In the end, the couple were able to salvage $3,550. That is not $4,000, y'all. Cecil kept some of that money. Cecil was like, listen, you left it there, and um, I took it. I'm just, <laughs> when I tell you, I could see so many of our animals that I'm aware of doing this. I could just see it. I can see it, y'all. I used to think that Rosé was real meek and mild, and I've like a couple of times left things on a on a counter or, because Rosé is not allowed on counters and tables, okay? She has all her little spots, but not counters and tables. So I'm like, we've already been through this. She ain't gonna go up here. Listen, I left a bag of cheese like shredded cheese i think i was making tacos i left the bag of shredded cheese on the counter and i went downstairs to my basement to work out i just hear rose coming down the, the stairs why does this look and this is when she was much smaller too this little cat has the cheese bag in her mouth hanging from her mouth and she like drops it at my feet like if she wants me to open it and go ahead and give her some cheese <laughs> I have a picture of it. I don't even know. If I can find it, I'll put it up. But she's just like. <laughs> there was also once where she got her bag of treats. She brought it upstairs this time. And let me tell you, like, it's not easy getting up and down these stairs. I'm, I'm impressed. I can't even be mad because you took your little self with a bag that's about the size of you and you were able to come up all these two flights or go down that flight to the basement. I'm impressed. I, you're not even in trouble. But she came upstairs with her bag of treats and was just like, <laughs> there was another time I had j I made a quick pasta and it was just like it was real simple and basic with like some sun-dried tomatoes or something so I come back downstairs and I left it I, like there was maybe one little grain of of rotini pasta I left it down there I come back and I'm like oh snap I must have dropped some of the pasta on the floor let me go ahead and pick that up then I dropped it way over there. <laughs> Ma'am is looking at me like, I'm like, Rosé, if you don't leave my stuff alone, we are gonna fight. We're going to fight, okay? Cause typically, like, Rosé doesn't eat my food. We, we have our separate dishes. We have literally our separate dishes. She has her spot, her little area with her water, her like, uh, dry food that's where she eats her um wet food out of tilted bowls like we we typically go into our separate corners so I'm always like surprised when she shows her true colors there was once I got in this bag of dry food and I was like I'm just leaving it right here let me go upstairs and take a shower I come downstairs this little child has eaten through the bag like so I'm not even surprised that this little golden doodle named Cecil went ahead and just chomped all over that money. I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't know. It couldn't have tasted good. But also, I love, I love that he kept some of it. 
the last story I'm going to tell you is about another dog. Because pets are wild. Pets are wild. Um... <laughs> So this was at like, I think it was at like a rescue mission. Um, yeah, Lost Our Home Pet Rescue. It is in Tempe, Arizona. And the dog's name is King. King done went ahead and busted out his kennel. <laughs> King busted out his kennel. And you know what? King is a good friend because he attempted to get some of his friends out too. He was like, I'm, this fun is not just for me. It's for all of us, guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's, there's video of this, you guys. So, King busts out of the kennel. You know, he tries a few times to get some of his homies out. And then, <laughs> you, just see, you just see him having his own little party. Okay? He's like swinging things around, playing with paper. He is having... <laughs> just like living his best life. King has been planning and waiting to do this since he got there. He's been like, this is what I'm going to do. And it's all on like the security video inside the, the rescue, inside the shelter. You can't even be mad. You just see him having a good old time. He not hurt nobody. <laughs> He's just like throwing food around. And so, um, the alarm went off, right, in the place. So, you just see, there's an officer that, like, comes to the door. King runs up to him. <laughs> like, hey, bud. <laughs> Tail wagging. And the officer manages, <laughs> manages to get King back in the little kennel. Because I feel like King was tired. He was like, I had my fun. I understand. It's time for me to chill out. This was like 1 in the morning that the alarm gone, had gone off. But you know what? This officer cleaned everything up. He swept up the floor. He put stuff back. I'm like, you just, you just went above and beyond. Because I wouldn't have done it. I'd have been like, King, you little badass. Um, but I'm about to go. I hope your your people clean this up in the morning. But you see him, he took this 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 is a person who helps out at home because he took the broom and was sweeping, he was wiping stuff down. I'm like, give him a medal. Alright, let me find a lipstick and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here is the finished look. I have Four more clients to go, so I'm glad I had this little break. Um, and I think that's it. So, feel free to let me know if you've heard of any of these stories. Um, also, let me know if any of your animals have done anything real shady and had no sense of remorse. Um, but I hope some of this was helpful and maybe even a little fun. I also hope that you're continuing to take care of yourself. Please like the video by doing that thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And I would love it also if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.